we're now live, Chair, Vice Chairman. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kim. Well, good evening, councillors, officers and members of the public, and welcome to this virtual meeting of the new Eastern Committee. Not so new now, I think we've been going for nearly a year, so... Uh, there you go. My name is Councillor Else and I'm Vice Chairman of this committee and um, I would like to start by saying that I'm supported this evening by the, these following officers. Uh, Lewis Jones, the Planning Solicitor, Beth Howland-Smith, Development Manager, Marie Clark, Area Team Leader, Tracy Farthing, Planning Officer, Susie Blackwood, Planning Officer, Gemma Patterson, Principal Planning Officer, Joe Dawes, Senior Planning Officer, Kimberly Sohn, Democratic Services Officer, who is in charge of the technology of the meeting, and Georgina Hall, Democratic Services Officer, who is clerk in the meeting. If I could ask members and officers to please use the hand raise function within Zoom to indicate that you wish to speak and mute your microphone when you are not speaking. Please keep your statements brief and to the point. We will be timing speeches this evening and an alarm will sound when you have been speaking longer than the four minutes allowed. If any members of the meeting lose their connection temporarily, we will pause to allow them time to rejoin the meeting. And if the webcast st stream fails, then we will adjourn whilst we reset the connection. And the first item on the agenda this evening is uh, the election of a chairman. Uh, Councillor Cole has uh, stood down as chairman and has proposed Councillor Paul Rivers to replace him, and I'm happy to second that nomination. If everyone is agreed, would you please switch on your microphones and signify as such? Agreed. 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 Thank you very much. I'll now therefore pass the meeting on to uh, Councillor Paul Rivers and welcome Councillor Rivers to the Eastern Planning Committee. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Councillor uh, Else. Uh, thank you, members. I do get the feeling sometimes that everybody else has stood back, leaving me in the front. But I'm very pleased to be here. And, uh, uh, well, let's let the good times roll. So, uh, agenda item number two, then. Uh, apologies for absence and substitutions, Georgina. Uh, are there any? No, Chairman. There's been no apologies or substitutions. Thank you very much. Uh, Item number three minutes for the last meeting. Uh, members, did anybody find any mistakes with, with the minutes? If not, I'll ask you to turn your microphones on and agree the minutes, please. Agreed. 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 Good. OK, thank you. Item four, declarations of interest. Uh, Georgina, any interests declared? Yes, Councillor Hegan wishes to say something. Uh, Thank you, Chair. I asked for the agenda item regarding um, 12 Busbridge Lane to be brought to committee, but I am declaring a non-pecuniary interest because they are quite close neighbours to me. And although I don't know the applicant or the principal objector, I do know others who have raised objections and therefore I will withdraw from the meeting for that item. OK, Councillor Higgins, thank you very much. Uh, Anybody else? Any other? Councillor Wilson has his hand up, Chair. Oh, thank you. Councillor Wilson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I uh, have a non pecuniary interest in item 10.2 in that I actually live in the road concern. But other than that, I've no um, problems. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Wilson, will you take part in the, uh, in the debate? Yes, yeah, certainly. OK, excellent. OK, thank you very much. Um, Georgina, questions by members of the public? Do we have any? No, Chairman. And questions by members, Georgina, are there any? No, Chairman. Wouldn't it be nice if the rest of this meeting went as quickly as that? So, um, item seven, um, and uh, I'll ask Beth on this. Uh, any relevant updates to government guidance or legislation since our last meeting? Beth, have you got any? Thank you, Chairman. Nothing of relevance to the matters before members this evening. I just would say, um, although I'm um, not a councillor, I do have, uh, I must declare an interest in item B3, um, Rose Cottage, and I, I will leave um, this meeting at that point. Okay. And there's one thing that I've forgotten too, uh, which is to ask, uh, well, to thank Councillor Cole for making room for me and for proposing me. Um, Councillor Cole, thank you very much. I should have done that earlier. I apologise for that. 
So uh, item number eight uh, on the uh, agenda, applications for planning permission. Uh, members, uh, please note that the polling feature within uh, Zoom has been set up so that votes on the following items can be taken by general assent uh, or using the polling function. Uh, if, a if a recorded vote is required, uh, this will be done by roll call. I'm going to add an extra bit to this for your information. Should we get to a situation where the vote is very close within one or two, I will call a roll call at that point to repeat uh, the, the vote action. That will just make sure that our uh, polling operation, our voting operation is clear. But uh, uh, I'll only I'll remind you about that should, should that occur. Um, 8.1, applications decided under delegated powers. Uh, Georgina, Bethany, do we, do we have any that you would like to advise us on? Um, thank you, Chairman. There be, there's no um, applications that have been determined under delegated authority under the temporary arrangement since the last meeting. Okay, thank you. So we move on then to applications subject to public speaking. Um, uh, the first one is uh, WA 2021-0116. Side of the flour mill, the street Hascombe. Um, it, this is a proposal for the erection of a detached dwelling and associated works, including restoration of works to uh, the water wheel. Uh, I think Gemma, Gemma Patterson, you're going to lead with this. Yes, I am, Chair, and thank you very thank much. You. Just bear with me. I'm just going to share the screen for the presentation. Right. I'm hoping everybody can see that and everybody can hear me. All right. So, the application site is located on the eastern side of the street in Hanscom. The site is a parcel of land once occupied by a working mill house and a mill wheel. The wheel is still in situ and parts of the structure of what appear to be the mill house and the dam also remain on site. The site is existing as a grassed area. Its remains of the mill, the wheel and remains of a stone wall are located roughly central to the site, just around about here and abut the higher ground of the dam wall on the southern part of the site. The image on this slide shows the extent of the remains of the flour mill, just down here in this photo. Only a small section of wall remains and the wheel itself, which is currently in a poor state. The existing features of the site are not highly visible from the main road, the street, as demonstrated by this photo here. The proposal involves the erection of an L-shaped dwelling, orientated to create a courtyard to the rear, Vehicular access will be gained from Mill Lane on the northern edge of the site. This lane is within the ownership of the applicants. The western elevation of the proposed dwelling would be visible from the street. The northern elevation would front Mill Lane. The southern elevation would only be partially visible above the existing dam wall. The internal living accommodation would meet the technical housing standards and all internal primary accommodation would be served by unrestricted windows, allowing for light and air, to circulate the rooms. This slide shows the rural settlement boundary highlighted in blue. Members will note that the site falls outside of the boundary, which sits on the western side of the street. This image also highlights in red, just down here, a previous development that was considered to represent limited infilling within the village, referred to on page 19 of the agenda report. Looking at some photographs now, the two of the larger images, uh, top left and bottom right, uh, demonstrate that the site is not part of the built up frontage along the street. The, uh, lower, the top right image is of the wheel cottage to the south, taken from the top of the dam bund, bund, and the lower left image shows the site from the east looking towards the street. Mill Lane runs along, runs along the northern boundary of the site. Moving on now to matters of consideration, members are being asked to exercise their judgment on the following. On the impact on the green belt, by giving some consideration to the exception of new development in the green belt criteria as set out in the MPPF, and whether the site could still be considered previously developed land, regardless of it laying dormant for a significant number of years, or whether the development could be considered as limited infilling within a village, noting that unlike previous examples of where limited infilling has been deemed acceptable, the proposal would not represent the development of a site between existing buildings. 
At present, the site acts as a transitional buffer between the settlement and the more sporadic development of the open green belt, and development may therefore result in the erosion of that purpose. Members are also being asked to exercise their judgment on the impact of the, a impact of the development on the AOMB and the AGLV, noting that both officers and the Surrey AOMB officers are satisfied that the proposal would not adversely impact upon the character of the protected landscape. Also for consideration is the design, noting that the proposed dwelling is considered to be well designed and appropriate for its rural setting. Also for consideration, impact on residential amenity. Members should note the significant distances between existing residential properties and the impact on trees, while observing that the council's tree officer has raised no objection to the proposal. I'd like to move members to the update now. Members are directed to the receipt of an addendum to the planning statement, which makes a case for very special circumstances. Should members conclude that the proposal would not fall within the exceptions for new development in the Greenbelt, Members will then need to consider the case in light of paragraph 144 of the MPPF, which states that very special circumstances will not exist unless the potential harm to the green belt by reason of inappropriateness and any other harm resulting from the proposal is clearly outweighed by other considerations. Members will need to consider whether the case put forward by the applicant in the update can outweigh the harm to the green belt caused by the inappropriateness of the development. Considerations such as local support would not necessarily be considered by officers to be very special, and officers would suggest that there are no precedents near the site, as each application is considered on their own merits and their own site circumstances. It should also be noted that there are no concerns raised in respect to the impact of the development upon the AOMB and the AGLV, the protection of which differs to that afforded the Greenbelt. The officer's recommendation remains as set out on page 28 of the agenda, that permission be refused subject to the reasons and informatives set out on page 28 of the agenda. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Gemma, that was very clear. Um, Georgina, I, I, I think we have uh, two speakers uh, uh, on this application. Uh, our first speaker is Megan Rowe. Uh, if Megan would, uh, Turn on her video and proceed. With my apologies if I pronounced your, your name wrongly, Megan. No, you pronounced it correctly. Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> okay. Is someone going to time my three minutes or four minutes? Yes, I will be. Okay, lovely. I'll just get going then. Firstly, I'd like to thank Councillor Seaborn for calling the application to committee so that it can be debated in the public domain. And I'd also like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of our clients who are extremely passionate about the history of the mill and have been overwhelmed by the significant level of support for the application, not just in terms of the consultee responses, but also with regard to the level of local support. Indeed, Huscombe Parish Council commented at their meeting that it's rare that their response is to support rather than just to raise no objections to a proposal within the village. I think you'll agree that this is a credit to the hard work that has gone into the preparation of this application and the sympathetic nature of the design. Our client's aim and heartfelt wish is to save this important part of the village's history, which be lost if action is not taken. As you will have seen from the case officer's report and as Gemma has just pointed out, the issue is that officers consider the proposal to amount to inappropriate development in the green belt. Whilst we don't agree that this is the case, we have since put forward the case of very special circumstances. As you're all aware, the MPPF sets out that inappropriate development in the green belt should not be approved except in very special circumstances which will not exist unless the potential harm to the green belt by reason of inappropriateness and any other harm resulting from the proposal is clearly outweighed by other considerations. The officer's report clearly sets out that there is no other harm resulting from the proposal. There would be no detrimental impact on amenity, the character and appearance of the area, nor the AOMB. The design is considered to be appropriate and there are no objections from any of the consultees. It is therefore only necessary to consider whether there is any potential harm to the green belt by reason of the inappropriateness. And in doing so, it's useful to consider that paragraph 133 of the MPPF 
sets out that the fundamental aim of Greenbelt policy is to prevent urban sprawl. Paragraph 134 sets out that Greenbelt serves five purposes. To check the unrestric unrestricted sprawl of large built up areas, to prevent neighbouring towns merging into one another, to assist in safeguarding the countryside from encroachment, to preserve the setting and special character of historic towns, and to assist in urban regeneration by encouraging the recycling of derelict and other urban land. It's our position that the proposal, which is well related to the village, set in a gap between two dwellings and with development to its north, south and west, would not be in conflict with any of those five purposes and what would not result in urban sprawl or encroachment into open countryside. We are strongly of the, the opinion that the proposal is not at odds with any of those five purposes and would not therefore cause any identifiable harm to the green belt. It would indeed be an asset to this beautiful part of the Surrey Hills AOMB. Having researched all options for the restoration of the mill wheel and the surviving walls of the mill house, our clients, clients find that this is the only viable way to secure the long-term presence of this important part of the village's history. As such, we respectfully request that you resolve to permit the application in the absence of any identifiable harm, but in the presence of an abundance of support from the local community. Thank you. Megan, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, I call on Councillor Seaborn uh, now to speak on this item. Richard, please. Thank you, Chairman. I called this application in as one of the ward members in recognition of the large number of representations, uh, including one from the Parish Council, in support of the application. However, the fact that the village is clearly in favour of the development isn't enough. Uh, it's just outside the formal settlement boundary, and it is in the Green Belt and the AONB. So a case does have to be made to go against the officers on balance recommendation to refuse permission. Much of the application is deemed acceptable, so let's consider the reason given for refusal. Officers feel that the application contravenes local plan policy RE2 by having an impact on the openness of the Green Belt, and by not constituted limiting infill within the settlement. I'd actually assert that the report points us in uh, the direction of acceptable reasons to tilt the balance in the direction of approval. And I think that those members who were able to attend the very helpful site visit last week will have had the issues put into context and will see why the case for approval is one that certainly should be considered. So in terms of the openness of the green belt, uh, we, we, you know, we've heard from the Surrey AOMB planning advisor stating that um, he considers this to be one of those rare cases where the development of a new house would not harm the landscape and scenic beauty of, of the Surrey Hills, but in his view, it would actually enhance the AONB by making its own positive contribution to the character and history of Haskin. So, you know, there's a positive statement in, in favour of the development. In terms of the infilling argument, the formal settlement boundary uh, actually extends past the site on the other side of the road. So the application site, the curtilage of it, is therefore no more than about 10 metres from the northern extent of the settlement. On the east side of the road, where the site is located, the settlement boundary stops some 110 metres to the south. However, development from the boundary to the site is now continuous, courtesy of the four properties erected in 2019 at Stream Gardens. So this brings into play the Court of Appeal judgment quoted in the papers, which stated that the fact that the site lay outside the village boundary as designated in the development plan was not determinative. The requirement is that as a matter of fact and on the ground, the site appeared to be within the village. And I would argue that it does. Uh, the last part of the officer's argument about infilling towards the foot of page 19 states, and I quote, or on land that is substantially surrounded on at least two sides by existing development. Well, we've got Chapel Cottage to the west and Wheel Cottage to the south. So to me, that constitutes two sides. Um, you know, the plots are large there, but the, there are curtilages adjacent and to the south. Officers also state that they don't agree that this site constitutes previously developed land by virtue of the previous building having blended with the landscape. 
But note that blended implies a passive process. In reality, the remaining parts of the mill have actually been blended with the landscape as a, fe as a feature, an active process. They're still very much part of the scenery and are recognized as such. There is no doubt that in this previous, this is previously developed land. You go to the site and you are in absolutely no doubt that this was the former mill. So I would argue that this application does satisfy the very special circumstances of NPPF 145G. But even if you don't agree that both the infilling and the previously developed land arguments apply, it is reasonable to conclude that one or the other does. So this is an unbalanced decision, but I hope that members will share my conclusion and support an application that is well supported, not only in the village, but also by external experts consulted in connection with this application. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Seaborn. Well, members, over to you. I see a number of hands appearing. Uh, call on Councillor Cossa, please. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman, and congratulations on your appointment as our, as our new chairman. Um, I, I have to say that this was one of the more interesting and, and enlightening site visits that, that I attended in terms of planning. And, and I have to say, and this is maybe for another occasion, it, it's really disappointing that it was held at such short notice. There were so few members there because I think that anyone who attended would have found it very difficult not to have shared the views that, that have so eloquently been expressed by, by Councillor Seaborn, and he's actually saved me a lot of time in terms of the things I, I wanted to say. Um, but, but it is absolutely clear that this is a planning application that in broad planning terms, and I'll get to the crux and the green belt and issues in a minute, um, in terms of its support by the community and in terms of the contribution it's going to make to that community is, is, is really something that we would want, I'm sure, all to support, um, both in terms of what we read and what we could have seen um, for those who weren't able to attend the, the, the site visit. But the crunch is, of course, that it's marginally outside the, 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 the settlement boundary. It's in the green belt. And, and I think we've dealt with a whole number of applications um, in which we, we do understand that, that we have to be very careful in thinking about whether there are exceptions. Now, I was going to spend some time saying why I, I understood the, the views that have been expressed by officers, but felt there was a different way of, of interpreting them. I don't think there's any doubt at all um, that both of, of those exceptions that have been put forward, limited development in the village and, 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 and the one about um, uh, re redeveloping, um, on, sorry, developing on previously developed land, that it might be in a very bad state, <laughs> But, but, but the wheel and so on is, is, is still clearly there. It's clearly been built in a way to, to give it prominence already. The proposal we have will build the development into that same landscape. And I have to say, I won't go into that in any more detail because as always, Councillor Seaborn is so eloquent on these matters. I, I, I can't better what he has said. I will listen again, as always, to my colleagues and the other views, but my, my predisposition at, at, at the moment, based on what I've seen um, and what I've read, is, is to go against, and it's something I really do, our officer recommendations and support this application. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks, Councillor Gosser. Uh, Councillor Townsend, Liz, please. Thank you, Chairman. You and um, congratulations on your <laughs> appointment. Um, I um, have listened to Councillor Seaborn and, and, uh, and you know, I am very aware that this is a, a nicely designed building um, and, um, you know, um, I don't think anybody could look at it and say that that, that wasn't the case. However, it is on the green belt. It is outside the village settlement and, and whether it's outside it by, 10 metres or 15 metres, it is outside the settlement. Um, I, I have looked at the NPPF and the previously developed land, and whilst um, Councillor Seaborn is introducing a passive or an active process for whether or not it's blended into the landscape, um, that, that to me doesn't really hold much weight, I'm afraid. It has blended into the landscape. 
And to be honest, I, I really am concerned about this because if we support this application this evening, we will set a precedent for other bits of ruined buildings that are scattered about the countryside outside of settlements and also um, um, on the green belt. And, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't give me any, any great pleasure to, to say that I'm going to go with the officer's recommendation because, you know, it is, it is a, an attractive building, but, but that doesn't make it um, for me in planning terms. That doesn't meet the criteria that I try to, to um, use in my judgment. And it has to be planning on planning grounds. And the planning grounds for this just simply do not stack up. Um, the fact that there's historical significance, um, again, that does not stack up as a planning ground to make this um, uh, have exceptional circumstances. And whilst I, I you know, I, I can see that there is local support, again, would that local support continue if there was another ruined um, bit of cottage again in the middle of the green belt down the road and they wanted to build something else there? I, I really feel that we are going on very slippery, slippery slope here. Um, and whilst, um, you know, um, I, I've listened to what Councillor Seaborn and Councillor Costa have said, it, it just doesn't stack up on planning grounds for me. And I'm going to have to go with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Hegan, Joan, calling on you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I did attend the site visit and I did go along initially very much in the same line of thinking as Councillor Townsend that we have to um, be quite um, clear on the envelope that we apply to encroachment on the green belt. But having been to the site and recalled the number of times I've driven through Hascom, because the other side of the road is already built up, and is also slightly elevated in relation to the application site. You really do feel as if you are already in the village by the time you're alongside that site, which I confess I'd never noticed before. Um, so I think that I do tend to give weight to the Court of Appeal judgment that we've been referred to um, as needing to look at the facts on the ground, not just the lines, the boundary lines of the development plan, um, to be determinative. But I also was struck by the potential for this to be an enhanced heritage asset so that even if we didn't conclude that it was legitimate infill, I do think that, and I would like officers to comment on the extent that if permission were to be granted, the extent to which it could be conditioned to really stress and retain the historical features that go beyond any old ruined derelict building and you know maybe to the point of even conditioning that there's a history as to why this is an important and interesting building that is being preserved so on balance i think i'm minded to go against the officer recommendation but i would like to know how far we might be able to go in conditions to emphasize that the historical value of the building is actually a very special circumstance. Thanks, Councillor. Um, Gemma, uh, before we perhaps forget uh, uh, Councillor Hegan's point, would you be able to comment on that, please? Thank you. Yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Councillor. Um, we, we could um, impose some conditions in order to um, put, you know, sort of bring out the um, historic interest of this non-designated heritage asset um, particular conditions that we could use just having a quick look we can do a prior to occupation that the water wheel must be repaired and reinstated that would be a reasonable condition um, another condition that we could consider is that um, in accordance with the scheme of, of uh, archaeological recording uh, and a written scheme of investigation the development should be carried out and um, I believe that another uh, condition we could um, consider uh, would be that a, a date stone is incorporated into the new building um, in a location visible from the public realm. So there are some conditions there that would be able to help preserve the non-designated heritage asset. Thank you Gemma. Uh, Councillor Hegan, do you want to consider at this point an amendment based on Gemma's wise words? Um, I'm not sure uh, 
the process here, because I've not been, I don't recall a situation where we would look to grant um, permission with conditions, because reading the various experts' reports, there are a lot of conditions that I think would be relevant to this um, application if we were to go against the officer recommendations. I'm not sure that I'd want to just make a recommendation for those conditions. Do we not need to perhaps think about conditions as a whole if the flavour of the meeting is to grant permission? Okay, Councillor. Yeah, I have no problems with that. I just didn't want to forget that option. Let's continue with uh, with our speakers and maybe come back to that at the end. Uh, Councillor Goodridge. Michael, please. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman, and again, congratulations on being our Chairman. I attended the site minute visit, and I must say I found it one of the most interesting and satisfying site visits I've made for a long time. Uh, and of course, this is a decision that has to be made on balance. This is not, we're not being told you can't grant it, it's contrary to policy. What we have got to decide is, um, are the um, views of our officers on the various planning points, particularly on pages 18 and 19, ones that we agree with or not? It's a very much a balance. You know, the officers are not wrong. They have had an opinion based upon on what they perceive. I have to say that... Um, I agree very much uh, with what Councillor Seaborn has said. Um, and with, when you visit the site, um, it, 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 uh, one of the most revealing things I thought when, revealing, when, when visiting the site was looking at the infill that we granted to four dwellings that were uh, erected um, between uh, Wheel Cottage and Rose Cottage. Um, four buildings, you know, the, the infill was a very large, the, the buildings were a very large distance apart. And of course, although they're behind trees, they can be seen from the road. Th this one is, a, in my view, a smaller infill. You uh, will, seeing it from the road w will be... Um, not as much as it would be for an ordinary dwelling because of the contours of the site. There's a bund, a, an enormous bund between Wheel Cottage and the site. Um, so very little um, detriment to, to Wheel Cottage. A and it, it seems um, or nearly obvious to me that um, that the um, building, there has been a building there. I, I don't know whether there's any definition of, of, of uh, previous property, previous development, how, how, how long it's got to be down before it's, it's irrelevant. It may have been down a hundred years ago, but part of the building is still there. We have to deal with each application um, on, it, on its merits and this, site in my view is unique on the ground the fairly obvious demarcation if you like is mill lane which which um is to the uh, north of the site i i i personally think weighing up everything the officers have said and and casting my own views on the site um and looking at the Court of Appeal judgment that's on page 19, and in particular looking at the paragraph below it, that on balance, I feel that this just sways on the side of approval rather than on the side of refusal. I'm, I'm very happy to listen, obviously, to what other people have to say, but on balance, I think this application is acceptable the site visit was extremely useful to help me um, form an opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I have uh, five more speakers indicating. Councillor Reid. Ruth, please go ahead. Can you hear me, Chair? Yes, I can. Thank you. On your position. I'm very supportive of that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
I've listened very carefully to what everyone has said so far, and I'm very interested in to hear what the previous speakers have said, but I will first like to congratulate Mr. and Mrs. Brett and, of course, Megan Rowe, because I believe this is a wonderful, wonderful, well-designed building. That being said, um, I'm going to be a devil's advocate here because I am very interested in one of my main interest apart from history is archaeology now i've looked on the surrey maps and there is no mention of the mill personally i would love to see it restored and i support some of the things that um councillor hegan has said but um we and we would all like to live in the green belt there are principles, although, that um, we have to really consider, as Councillor Townsend has said, it is outside the village boundary. It is in the green belt. I don't really think I have heard of any special circumstances. <clears throat> the, ref the referral to the buildings that are um, that are already being built, I believe those were exceptional because they were providing more of affordable houses for the village people. I didn't go on the site visit. I know Haskimb extremely well. I go through it very often. Um, I'd just like to point out a few more things. Um, Councillor Coss has said the wheel has nothing to do with it. Um, you know, it, it isn't... Um, you know, he, he, he said it's very important to restore the wheel and the mill, but that's nothing to do with the exceptional circumstances, in my opinion. Um, no one's mentioned so far that, that Mill Lane is actually a bridle way. Um, and my concern is, again, this is the countryside, um, and I, I don't really want to see bridleways or footpaths obstructed or used or moved in any way. I like walking myself on them. Um, just looking at my list of things I wanted to mention. Um, as I said, it's beautifully designed, but I think this is the wrong place for the house. So I, and I still congratulate the, the architects and the, um, the Pratts the, um, for, for building it or, or thinking of building it. Um, the only archaeology I could find was archaeology around the church in Haskham. There is no mention of the mill, so I wanted to put that point forward. There is... There is another case that I'd like to quote, the case which was the Abuthnot Hall in Shamley Green, which went to appeal recently and the appeal was dismissed because of the green belt. Now that was green belt right in the middle of Shamley Green with the open green just in front. And I would say that if this went to appeal, they would probably lose because you know that this is not an exceptional circumstance and they might even quote the abuthnot hall which the planning the planning application was to extend the hall and take more of the green belt so so i i, I really do think that that might not be um their appeal might not be upheld um there also no one's mentioned that there was an application, I think, in 1963, um, which, um, after which, um, and one of the comments by the officers in that day and age, was that it, it was not very good soil. In fact, the subsoil, they said, was unsuitable for development. Um, so and it's, it's very wet even now, and there will be drainage problems for building. So, so I rest my case there. I hope I've mentioned some of the things that, um, you know, are, are um, to be considered. Thank, Thank you. you Councillor. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Dinos, Kevin, would you have your turn, please? Thank you, Chair, and congratulations as well. Keep that uh, theme going. Um, <laughs> I will try and 
not repeat some of the excellent um, debate we've had so far. Um, first, I just want to say to Gemma Patterson, I thought it was an excellent presentation, Gemma, to the point, as always, you know, the, the issues that we need to consider. So well done. I thought it was a really, really good. Um, I think Councillor Seaborn um, put some really, really good points across and Councillor Townsend actually then put some points across about special circumstances. The only thing on that is where I think she, she mentioned about setting the precedence. Of course, special circumstances means you have to consider those special circumstances for that particular location and application. So although I think the point had some merit, I'm not sure it's as strong as I thought it originally was going to be. Um, and Councillor Reid mentioned about the 1963 um, application. I'm not sure that really is, is applicable, sort of almost 60 years um, past and planning law has absolutely changed um, year after year. It's been a really interesting debate, um, but I think I, for on this occasion, I will go against the officers. It's not very often I do that, um, just because I do feel the special circumstances, but I absolutely agree with Councillor Hegan. One of the points I would have raised was about the preoccupation as one of the conditions. And I think the conditions need to be so tight to make sure we preserve all these features that it's not going to be resolved tonight. And I think the officers are going to have to go away and do quite a lot of writing and, and working on that. Um, I'll leave it as that because I can still see there's a number of hands up. So thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Uh, two more speakers uh, then. I see that Councillor Townsend has also raised her hand. Let's hold on that one for a bit, Liz. Uh, Councillor Gale, Maxine, please. Thank you, Chairman, and I'll continue with the theme. Congratulations. <laughs> um, yeah, I've just been making a few notes, really, whilst people have been speaking, and um, it's, it is fascinating what they're trying to do, and, you know, all power to them for what they've actually come up with. However, I still see that it is outside of the settlement, um, and I don't really see it as an infill as such, because the other properties are quite a way off. Um, it's not as we've usually seen infill. I do think with Liz, um, this would definitely set a precedent for people finding any old bits of ruin anywhere in our borough and determining that it was previously developed land. So I think that would set a precedent. And I'm also in, in wondering about the actual ruins. It says it's a mill. Was it a habitable mill? Was there accommodation there? Or was it just a water wheel that was aiding the flow of the, the water? We see there's quite a lot of water in that area. So was it actually habitable? That, that would be one of my questions, but I think I'm gonna to have to go with the officers tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Gray, John, please. Yep. Congratulations uh, on your chairmanship and thank you very much for calling me. Um, it is a question of balance and I, I think that Councillor Townsend raised uh, the need to be cautious on this. And I've been very interested in listening through. I think Councillor Hegan's point about the fact that when you approach Haskham and then you approach this site, you're already really in, in the village. Um, I do think it's it, I do think it's infill. Um, I don't think it, it creates any form of urban sprawl. And I'm extremely impressed by the uh, Surrey Hills AONB officer who quotes in his report on this rare occasion. And it is rare, it's very rare to get them to, to come this way. And I think in itself, it should make us think a little bit more deeper in this. That plus the comments and on the appropriateness of the design of this building. They have really thought about how they can enhance the setting there and keep the, uh, the wheel prominent in that, that particular design. Um, a few people have mentioned blended in. I, I remember planning officer telling me that their definition of blended in was when it had collapsed sufficiently so that we couldn't notice it. Um, I think that would be tragic for this because if it disappeared completely, we would naturally have evidence of that and evidence of part of the history of this. 
Um, it was mentioned there's a bridal way up there. I, I don't know how many bridal ways that, that um, I'm trying to think who it was who raised it, but um, in Dunsfold, we have a number of bridal ways. And the only reason we've got them and they are maintained is because they are tracks and there are, is other traffic on that. Now, certainly we don't want to increase the traffic too much, but I don't think one dwelling like this is going to give a problem to the nature of the bridal way. I'm cautious. I certainly don't want to create a precedent, but I'm minded to go against the, the officer's recommendation depending on what I hear from other speakers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Townsend, you've already spoken once. Would you mind if I brought in uh, Councillor Wilson before you? Not at all, Chairman. Thank you. George, please. Uh, yes, and congratulations. I missed that when I was uh, making my uh, <laughs> thing about the other one. Um, Greenbelt. Once we lose it, we're not going to get it back. And it concerns me that we may well be setting a precedent. And I think this particular time I will be going with the officers. Um, rather than have a heritage asset, it rather seems to me it's going to be a garden ornament. And I don't really think that you're going to be able to restore it to anything other than what Fred Dibner would love, something that used to do something. And I think we need those to remind us of our history. We don't need them built into anything. So don't lose the green belt is what I say. You don't ever get it back. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. And now Councillor Townsend, thank you for, uh, for holding back. That's absolutely fine. Thank you for, for allowing me to come back. Um, I, I, I really, um, uh, uh, Councillor Wilson has, has said something about it, it ending up as a, a garden ornament. And I do think, you know, councillors, whilst we're, we're, you know, talking about the history of, of the site, um, you know, the, the, it isn't a, a designated heritage asset. It's a non-designated um, asset. Um, and, and also, you um, you know that there isn't anything to say that the actual wheel itself is going to be, um, um, as Councillor William uh, Wilson said, be, be able to be repaired. But but um, I you know have listened to to what my um, other councillors are saying, and there's just one thing that I would like to ask um, Gemma before proceeding because um, um, should should um, uh, members be minded to go against the Office of Recommendation on this one. I have looked through the um, ecology report and it does mention in there on page 21 about protected species and there being several, uh, the list of uh, habitat suitable for several protected species. Um, there is a bat survey that's been done and also one on uh, reptiles, but nothing's been done on some of the other protected species, which goes against the habitats regulations. Um, and if there is suitable habitat for dormice, then there should be some tubes put in place and to make sure that there isn't any dormice on site. And so I would just point out to members that um, if, if they are minded to, to approve this, that the relevant surveys have not been done to ensure that um, the um, protected species will be protected. And um, I think a, a lot of councillors here will have been present when we had um, previously a, 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 um, um, a barrister which spoke to us about the habitats regulations and pointed out that you can't mitigate for this after planning permission has been given and it shouldn't be a condition either. So whether or not people are, are saying, oh, well, it doesn't matter if a few bits of wildlife are lost, it matters to me and it matters in, in, it to, to all of us under the habitats regulations. So whether or not um, people are being minded to think uh, this should go ahead tonight. I would draw attention to the fact that, as far as I can see, and this um, Gemma tells me otherwise, that all the relevant um, surveys have not been carried out in order to make this um, uh, something that can be decided by this council this evening. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor. Gemma, can you put our minds straight, please? Yes, I can. Um... What I can say, Councillor Townsend, is that the report was um, submitted to our ecologist, Surrey Wildlife Trust, for um, 
assessment and for comments. Um, I'm just reading through their response now. It, it is quite a detailed response. Obviously, they've, they've spoken about the habitats and the bats um, and the protected species, which are the badgers and the breeding birds and the reptile and amphibians, which were identified in the, uh, the reports. Uh, it then goes to other mammals. And it suggests here that the ecology report notes that the site offers suitable habitat for other mammals, but that there was no evidence of them recorded during the surveys. Uh, what they have suggested, though, is that notwithstanding that, work should therefore be undertaken with some uh, recommendations outlined in the preliminary ecology uh, appraisal report for mitigation, um, as our uh, professional um, ecologist is satisfied with the proposal. Um, we as officers have uh, raised no objection on that count. Could I just say, Gemma, not to not to um, second guess you, but I thought on page four of that it actually said that further surveys would be required. And, and also 6.5.21, perhaps that um, I've noted that down, so that may be. Over to you, Gemma. Sorry, I'm just having a quick look at the response. So this is 6.24 of the report itself, not the uh, response from Surrey Wildlife Trust. Bear with me two minutes, thank you. Sorry, thank you, Gemma. No, that's all right. Obviously, if uh, it does say that, it's something that we just need to double check. Right, 6.24. Sorry, I've just is down 6.5.21. Oh, beg your pardon, sorry, 6.5.21. Oh, apologies. Right. Can, I'm sorry, would you mind just confirming again that number for me, just to make sure I'm definitely looking at the right uh, section? 6.5.2. Apologies, Gemma, I'll just check myself. Sorry. Georgina, might it be appropriate to take a five minute break a little in advance of our... Yes, you minutes. can. We have a screen uh, break well, slide well, we can put up after this if you want to, if you just decide, Chairman, we do that sometimes. Okay. Um, if everybody has agreed, uh, let's give Gemma five minutes uh, and we can come back to this fresh. Okay, everybody agree with that? Georgina, can we just hold on for five minutes then, please? We've put the slide up, Gemma. Perfect. Is it in uh, Dormice particular, your concern, councillor? Sorry, Gemma, I was on another screen and trying to find my mute button. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Was apologies, it, apologies. It, well, it was just the, the, there's the badgers in there. There's, it said yeah. that there was relevant habitat. I think that was on page 21. Yeah. Um, and it said that there was relevant habitat for several different species, not just not yes. just the great crested newt or the reptiles and the bats. And I could only find evidence of a survey. The rest of it is desktop studies. And as far as mm. I'm aware, desktop studies aren't suitable for the presence of you know, to, to say that there has been an adequate um, surveys done when they've highlighted the fact that there is um, potential um, suitable habitat for the protected species. I wasn't aware that a desktop survey would then be um, uh, suitable because once you find the protected species on site, then obviously you, you can't condition against something that you haven't checked that isn't there. I'm just wondering, though, if it's been if they've actually been found or if it's suitable habitat so there is the potential for them to be there so there hasn't and a desktop survey has potentially looked at the numbers of, of door mice in the area and whether or not this would be as suitable for them what sort of constraints might be on the site for them to be able to get into the site uh, sometimes I, th I think that the uh, sorry wildlife trust 
are satisfied with a desk survey um, where it looks quite clearly that even though there is habitat on site that, that could be used for dormice, if during their overall site visit there hasn't been an actual indication of a dormouse on the site just a suitable habitat they don't necessarily need to actually carry out any sort of further surveys that's my understanding I'm not an ecolog ecological professional though we've really left that in the hands of Surrey Wildlife Trust um, and as our ecological um, you know professionals they have come back and said that actually they're, they're satisfied with that aspect of it, particularly for dormice. They haven't come back and said, you know, that they need further surveys for dormice. So I would suggest that they are satisfied with the study. And it could be that the desktop study has been done, has satisfied them in some way in terms of constraints. I mean, had, had, the, had they been out on site and actually seen some dormice, I think that might've been slightly different. Councillor Townsend, Liz, is that, uh, are you happy with that? I'm obviously keen to uh, restart the meeting as soon as we can. Apologies, Chairman. Um, well, I, I'll have to say uh, from, from what Gemma has said, that she's satisfied that the Surrey Wildlife Trust have um, you know, um, covered this adequately. I still have reservations on it, but um, I will take what, what Gemma has said. So, so yes, I'm, I'm happy to proceed. Thank you, and, Chairman. And sorry, Chairman, may I just add as well, if it gives some a little bit of further comfort, it does, um, it, it suggests here that the proposed development would not result in the loss of potential hazel dormouse habitat as no woodland will be directly affected um, and therefore no habitat fragmentation will occur so the dormouse populations will not be isolated. Um, I'm assuming on the basis of the fact that Surrey Wildlife Trust haven't objected on that aspect that they're satisfied with that statement. Um, I'm afraid it's a bit beyond me to, to question that at at this, at this precise moment. And so I think as, as, as a local planning authority, we'd have been satisfied with that response. Yeah. Oh, oh, Thank you, Okay, Gemma. all right. Uh, Georgina, can, may we restart then, please? Um, Kimberly's gonna restart. I think, Kim, are we up or do we need to wait? All okay to go, Chair. Thank, thanks very much. I've got one last speaker on this, uh, Councillor Darcy. Martin, please go ahead, and then let's roll to a vote. Um, yeah, commiserations, uh, Chairman. <laughs> oh, sorry, I mean congratulations. You got um, it right first time. <laughs> what I was just going to add was re really in reference to what uh, Councillor Townsend was saying, that in the Wildlife Trust uh, letter, they've put some recommendations. So if we are minded to, get, to grant permission, then I would ask that those recommendations should be included in the, in the uh, conditions, uh, I think the based on section seven of the preliminary ecological appraisal, but it's all in the letter from Wildlife Trust. So could I ask that that be added in as a condition? Okay, uh, uh, thanks, Councillor. We'll, we'll come to that. Um, well, members, I think we should roll to a vo uh, to a vote now. I remind you that if the uh, if the vote is close within one or two. Uh, I would like to call a roll uh, after that, but let's see how we go. So um, I remind you. No, there was two now. Uh, so let me remind you, members, that the recommendation is that this application be refused. Ken, can we put up the magic voting mechanism, please? All 15 people have voted. We've got seven for the recommendation to refuse and eight against. Excellent. OK, uh, as I just in indicated, what a lovely start to my chair, chairmanship here. Uh, may I call a roll call, please? Yes. Um, Councillor Else. You need to unmute. Against. 
Councillor Cole. Four. Councillor Cossa. Against. Councillor Darcy. Against. Councillor Dinas. Against. Councillor Ellis. Against. Councillor Gale. Four. Councillor Goodridge. Against. Councillor Gray. Against. Councillor Hegan. Four. Councillor Reid. Councillor Reid. Four. Four. Councillor Rivers. Four. Councillor Sadler. Councillor Townsend. Four. Councillor Wilson. Okay, we've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got seven for the recommendation and eight against. So the recommendation uh, to grant, uh, to uh, refuse permission is lost, if you'll excuse that double negative. So uh, I'm seeking um, someone to uh, propose and a seconder uh, a an amendment or a motion to, I guess, do the opposite. Do I have a? a I'm proposal? happy to propose that the propose that the application be granted. I haven't got a great list of conditions, um, but it may be that the officers will have uh, drafted some already. <laughs> I'm happy to second, Chairman. Thank you, Councillors. Gemma, it all falls on you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, you're quite right. Members have, uh, sorry, uh, officers have um, drafted a number of conditions. Um, the majority of the conditions relate to the um, professional highway officers, um, the Wildlife Trust um, recommendations. Um, there's a couple of conditions there, as we discussed earlier, about the um, sort of the protection of the, the non-designated heritage assets and um, uh, some, a scheme for landscaping. Did members want me to go through all of them or are they quite happy for um, you know, officers to use their judgment in terms of you know, what conditions that we put on particularly? I think it's always difficult to ask everybody all at once, but I, yeah. I, I would speak on behalf of the committee uh, that will leave it with you. If, if, if members are happy to do so, I mean, all the conditions are going to be quite standard to what we do for for a single dwell, a single dwell uh, in, would, in would, uh, would members unmute and, and signify please would agree. agreed 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 agreed, agreed. 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 as long as we do put in the non-heritage assets ones please Gemma. yes of course thank you right uh, thank you chair Gemma, will you want to read read out that proposal or is there some other way that we can we can deal with it a little more quickly? Um, Emma, well, what happened? Um, Gemma can actually could actually send you the um, conditions for you to just approve. You'd like me to you'd like me to read them out too, or, or what? No, no, they can be sent to you after the meeting to approve, okay. Chairman. Right, fine, fine. Okay, in, in, in which case, Georgina, correct me if I'm wrong, we have a proposal and a seconder for uh, a new motion, which is that uh, this recommendation be accepted. Is that correct? Yes. So uh, may I request that Kim launches the voter again and uh, we will record our votes. So members, please choose.
We need two more people to vote by the look of things. Okay, we've got 11 for, three against, and one abstain. Okay, thanks, Georgina. So uh, we have a recommendation uh, to grant permission to, uh, to, to this application, application WA 2021-0116, site of the flour mill, the street, Ascombe. Members, thank you very much. Okay, are we done on that, Georgina? Are we okay? Yes, yes, that's fine. Okay. We can go on to the next one. Can I just ask, Gemma, could you also send me a copy of the conditions so that when I publish the decision notice, I have them all? Absolutely, we'll do. Thank you. Officers, thank you very much for, the, for that terrific effort there. Uh, moving on then to 9.2, uh, application number WA 2020-1565. Uh, this is at 12 Buzzbridge Lane, Godalming. Uh, it's a proposal for the erection of extensions and alterations to elevations as amended by plans received uh, 17th of December and 25th of January. Uh, Susie, Susie Blackwood, you're going to present this to us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Um, Kimberly, could you share my slides, please? I believe Kimberly's doing that, but if Kim, if there's any problem, I can do it. I'm just finding it. Thank you. Next slide, please. This application seeks planning permission for extensions to the front and rear of 12 Busbridge Lane to increase habitable accommodation. Please note that since the writing of the report, an additional drawing showing the 25 vertical analysis rule in relation to Piper's Field has been received. This is shown later in this presentation. Next slide, please. The application site is outlined in um, is outlined in red. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Um, sorry, bear with me. Um, Busbridge Lane with Ramson Road behind to the south and the junction with Holloway Hill leading to Chusley Lane to the west. Note number 12 is surrounded predominantly to the west by varying styles and sizes of properties. Next slide, please. These block plans show number 12, the application size is outlined in red. The first shows the property as existing. The middle shows the original submission under this application. And the third is the new proposal. The new submission proposes a two-storey extension to the front northeastern elevation and to the rear southern elevation, with the existing garage being replaced with a single-storey extension spanning the depth of the dwelling. The width of the dwelling will not in increase. Next slide, please. These are the street scene photos showing number 12, barely visible from the street, being screened with hedging and set back 31 metres from the road, and the varying styles and sizes of properties within the vicinity having been constructed with different materials. Next slide, please. And these images show the front and rear elevation of number 12, Buzzridge Lane. Next slide, please. So image A is taken from the front of 12 Busbridge Lane, looking east towards number 14. This shows the roof end gable looking 
behind the hedges um, of number 14. Image B is taken at the rear of number 12, again looking east towards number 14, the dotted red line indicating the increase in depth to a maximum of 3.8 metres. Um, if you note the trees um, behind that dotted red line um, have a tree preservation order attached to them. Image C is taken from the front of 12 Busbridge Lane looking west towards Piper's Field. It shows their roof behind the fencing and image D is taken at the rear of number 12, again looking west towards Piper's Field. The proposed single storey extension would project back to the edge of the current paving as indicated by the red dotted line. Next slide, please. These are the existing elevations of 12 Busbridge Lane. The north elevation is the front facade. Next slide, please. These are the amended submitting proposed elevations. They show reduced proposal with a single storey extension replacing the existing garage. Um, and front two storey extension, three metres, thank you, three metres from the boundary of number 14, plus reduction in depth to two, to two metres. The chimney has been removed in this submission and the side dormer would be obscure glazed. In addition, the rear southeastern corner has been reduced away from the tree root protection zone from the trees in number 14. Next slide, please. These are the existing plans of 12 Busbridge Lane showing the varying depth of rear facade. Next slide, please. These are the amended submitted proposed plans. They show a reduced proposal with single storey extension replacing the existing garage and front two storey extension, three metres from the boundary of number 14 with reduced depth um, as discussed previously. Next slide, please. Um, this image shows that the 25 degree vertical analysis rule as suggested in the residential SPD is not breached by the proposal to number um, to Piper's Field. Next slide, please. So the main matters of consideration, um, office, officers believe impact concerns to Piper's Field have been addressed. The new proposal is set marginally further away from the boundary than the current existing garage. The proposed single storey extension would have an increased depth with a roof that hips away from the boundary. First floor proposal has a greater depth from front to rear of the dwelling, but again hips away, reducing overbearing. There would be no loss of light and the two roof light windows, if under 1.7 metre guidance height, would be condition of pure glaze to prevent overlooking. Um, officers' opinion that there would be no impact to number 14 Busbridge Lane from the front two-storey extension, which is set three metres from the boundary line. Number 14 dwelling is set a further seven metres from the boundary. There is a six foot fence between the properties with additional hedging and mature trees providing further screening. The rear extension again would be screened with a mature tree subject to a tree preservation order. The first floor side windows would be obscure glazed. The roof hips away from the boundary with a two storey roof line set down from the highest ridge. Next slide, please. Um, Officer recommendation is that permission be granted subject to conditions. Next slide, please. And thank you, Chair. Thank you, Kimberly. Well done, Susie. Thank you very much. Uh, you. Now, I understand we have uh, a number of speakers. Uh, we have uh, Michael Parsons. Uh, Michael, can I call on you to unmute and... Yeah, evening. And four minutes, is that right? Yeah, sure. Thank you. I'll, okay. I'll, um, I have a prepared speech, but I will just make a couple of amendments as I go, as uh, some of the points that Susie raised uh, could do with a bit of clarification, I believe. So thank you. I speak on behalf of all six adjacent neighbours um, to the site who have all individually objected to this development. 
I'll raise the objections common to all of us, uh, points uh, individual neighbours have asked me to raise, and my own objections is the property most affected by these uh, proposals. Uh, it's clear to say that none of the uh, adjacent neighbours object to a sympathetic redevelopment of the property. However, we believe the proposals do breach Waverley's own guidelines on buildings and extensions uh, put in place to uh, protect existing residents' properties from overlooking, overbearing, and other adverse uh, uh, environmental impacts. Uh, we all object on the basis that the development is overscale for the existing 19th century coach house that's on the site. Uh, it currently sits modestly in its plot, set back from Busbridge Lane, as we've seen, uh, but it does back directly onto uh, my garden. Um, the proposed extensions dramatically increase the volume of the house and will degrade the amenity of neighbouring properties by overbearing and overlooking private gardens, uh, in the latter case, particularly uh, Radcliffe House. Um, the residents of 14 Busbridge Lane specifically requested that the development, um, if approved, does have a planning condition on uh, glazed windows, uh, that they are opaque and that they don't open to protect their privacy, as I think has already been mentioned. Um, we all object that the development onto the um, western elevation uh, is a height significantly above uh, the existing flat roof uh, garage, which in itself is an extension to the old 19th century coach house and therefore is unreasonable. Um, the houses in the neighbourhood are all um, detached properties set back from their boundaries, uh, giving clear sight lines between properties and creating a feel of space. And it's unreasonable to allow one property to, to uh, develop right up into the boundary uh, to the detriment of all others, um, and also precluding others from building to, to their boundaries as well. Otherwise, you get the, uh, the terracing effect. Um, the existing garage structure, um, whilst it's connected to the house, is not encompassed in the main body of the house. Uh, and the proposal increases its height significantly and the volume of the garage. And Susie did state that uh, that it, it's, well, the, the way I, I heard what she said wasn't that the garage was being extended. It's actually being doubled in size uh, backwards along uh, the uh, western boundary of the uh, of uh, 12 Busbridge Lane. So it's, it's, it's not the same uh, building. It's gonna be a meter and a half higher and twice, uh, twice the length, all of which be along my boundary. Um, we note the application is a revised plans to move the structure uh, three metres from the eastern boundary, but uh, as previously said, um, it is not being moved to uh, further than one metre away from the, um, from the western boundary, as is given in the SPD guidelines. So I, I propose, uh, I see, I object to the proposal uh, to extend along, it's 12 metres along the side of the house, and this extension will build onto 90% directly onto my rear boundary. As I said, the, um, uh, the, the, the roof line is one meter, one and a half meters higher and twice the length of the existing uh, flat roof garage. Uh, and I say that's directly onto my uh, rear um, boundary of my house. I object on the basis due to the loss of amenity in my main recreation area, which is my rear garden. Uh, you can see from the site plan that Susie uh, put up um, that the, the 12 budget lanes back directly onto my, my garden at a perpendicular angle. The houses aren't side by side. It is the, you know, the, the main rear view and the main um, amenity area of my house. Uh, you can also see that my garden is relatively small. It's about 30 metres deep. And building directly to the boundary causes me uh, a ser serious loss uh, of amenity through proximity and overbearing nature of the building. Um, it would create a crowded sort of tunnel-like feel to my garden uh, which is unreasonable and not in keeping with the uh, with the area. Additionally, uh, the roof and gutter line for the proposed, extent, proposed extension are not uh, accessible from the application uh, from the applicant's property, and therefore cannot be inspected uh, nor serviced from his own uh, from his own property. In addition, um, whilst the brick chimney has been uh, removed from the application, there is now a, a chimney pipe that looks to be sort of four to five meters high. Uh, uh, and presumably built out of metal, and that's built within one meter of the boundary uh, through the um, through the, the roof of the extended garage, which is unsightly. It will cast unwanted shadows across my garden. Uh, the chimney stack in itself is barely visible from the application from the applicant's garden, but will overbear my garden and will be unsightly to two other uh, adjacent properties as well. And I think the imbalance of benefit to the applicant and the detriment to myself and others is uh, You've is had unreasonable. Four minutes, sir. Okay, uh, so I will finish saying there is a better solution um, that, that the applicant could build in front of the existing house, which puts the, um, uh, the house in line with others on Busbridge Lane. And the final point I would say about detriment 
the rear aspect of my house will go from 50% uh, trees and, and, and brick built to 90% brick built. So th there is a significant detriment to the environment of, uh, of my house, my garden, and, and a loss of our amenity. So we as neighbours believe this should be rejected and a more sympathetic plan should be sought. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. That, that, that's uh, very clear. Um, and now uh, I have a joint uh, submission. James Nevitt and Dale Jones will be sharing that four minutes. Uh, who's going first, James or Dale? Uh, James, Chair. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair, and congratulations. Um, good evening, all. As, as Chair said, we're going to be sharing this with Dale Jones. Uh, my name is James Nevitt. I'm the applicant of this. Um, we moved into this coach house back in November 2017 in need of some quite major renovation. Um, when we bought it, we were a family of three. That's now grown to a family of five since having three children. Um, we've been working very closely with the planning officer and the Abora Cultural co colleagues since the first application uh, last year. The considerable design changes we've made are not tokenistic at all. Um, there is a result of following all recommendations from the planning officer and in the spirit of good neighbourliness. We've one single goal, and that's to create a home uh, for our growing family in an area that we love. Um, and it's very much a long term investment for us. We love the character of our home. We're going to try, try and keep as much of the original features as possible by using the likes of reclaimed materials, local tiles and traditional methods to restore it both outside and in. I now work from home, so I require a quiet space, which is sometimes quite difficult. Uh, and also I need to allow my, my other family members their own space. We really want to keep our family in the area. I want to keep my children in the local schools, but we do need the space to do it. I thank you all for your time. Dale is now going to kindly go over some of the planning aspects for you. Thank you, Mr. Levitt. Dale? Many thanks, Chair. Good evening, members. My name is Dale Jones, and I'm a Chartered Town Planning Consultant representing Mr. Nevitt, the applicant. The application before the committee this evening has been subject to many revisions which were requested by council officers in order to ensure that the proposed development would be acceptable in planning terms. My client agreed to all of the suggested amendments throughout the planning process to ensure that the resultant scheme would safeguard the amenities of the neighbours whilst allowing him to sensitively extend the family home. As a result of the revisions, the planning officer has fully endorsed the scheme before committee this evening with a recommendation to approve subject to conditions. And we are grateful that the council has worked in such a positive and proactive manner to get us to this position. Some of the key changes made to the scheme are outlined on page 29 of tonight's public agenda pack before the members. But in brief, to the eastern facade of the site, the depth of the proposed two-storey front extension has been reduced to two metres, back from the original proposal of five metres. And the proposal has also been set back three metres from the eastern site boundary to comply with the council's residential extensions SPD, as well as three metres to the southeast in order to safeguard the adjacent trees on neighbouring land. The side window to the east would also be obscure glazed and controlled by condition four to prevent any overlooking and loss of privacy. To the western facade, the initial two-storey proposal with chimney has been revised and set down to a single, single storey extension with flue and also the extension has been moved away from the boundary by 0.2 meters currently the existing garage to that elevation elevation extends right up to the boundary in terms of the assessment it's important to note the council have undertaken a robust assessment of all the elements of the extension to the east and to the west and concluded there will be no demonstrable harm the officer assessment has actually taken an evidence-based approach, which includes the BRE assessment based on the application of the 25 degree test. The proposal would comply with the 25 degree test, which be, demonstrates beyond any doubt that there would be no harmful loss of light and overshadowing to the neighboring properties to the west. And as such, we respectfully request that the planning committee consider these points alongside the officer's recommendation set out in the agenda back and approve the planning condition permission subject to the use of conditions. Thank you for your time, committee. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Jones, and th thank you to Mr. Nevitt. Uh, I, I call on now Councillor Martin, uh, who wishes to speak to the, to this committee. Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, with Councillor Hegan, am the ward councillor, uh, and we together have called this application to put before you. Mr. Chairman, I have carefully weighed up the pros and cons of this application and entirely understand the wishes of the applicant. 
However, my conclusion uh, is that this proposal is flawed and I urge the committee to vote against it. My view is supported by a considerable number of objectors, as we have heard at this evening from Mr. Parsons uh, when he spoke a little earlier. Um, now, as you can see from the location plan on page 30 of the report before you, the site in question is a former coach house in small chalet bungalow style set back a long way from Busbridge Road, uh, considerably behind the building line in that road. Uh, the nature of that style and the current size means that the house as is has little negative impact on its neighbours. The proposal is for a very large extent, extension, increasing the footprint and most particularly raising the height and greatly extending the roof line. Now, this can best be seen by comparing the existing west side elevation on page 33 with the proposed west side elevation on page 35. This new elevation, long and high, stretches, as we've heard from Mr Parsons, almost entirely across the rear of Piper's Field, the rear of which is just 12 or is it 13 metres or some 40 feet away, representing, I would submit, a considerable loss of amenity for the occupants. The impact on uh, Radcliffe House and Hazards and number 10 Busbridge Lane is also considerable. Now, interestingly, Mr. Chairman, the planning officer herself acknowledges of the negative impact that I've mentioned in the final paragraph on page 29 of the report. And that says, and I quote, the proposed rear extension would increase the scale and bulk of the dwelling, but owing to its orientation to the rear of the dwelling, it would not be highly visible from the public realm and would, and would not appear unduly prominent. Well, I beg to differ. Not being visible may be true for those passing along Busbridge Lane, as the dwelling is set well back from that road. But that is not the case for the occupants of the houses in Chewsley Lane. The residents of Chewsley Lane are part of the public realm and are highly impacted by this proposal. If this large extension is permitted, they then will suffer its very considerable impact permanently. So I ask the members, Mr. Chairman of this committee, to look again and compare those block plans before and after on pages 30 and 31, seeing the large increase in footprint and noting the position relative to Piper's Field in particular, I then ask members to look again at the west elevations before and after on pages 33 and 35. If you feel able to look at page 35 and tell me that that's okay, then you will surely vote for the application in line with the officer's recommendation. But if like me, you look at page 35 and say, that's too much, that's too big in scale and bulk, it's too intrusive, it's out of keeping with the street scene, it's visible and negative to the public realm in Chewsley Lane and will create an unacceptable loss of amenity to Piper's Field, Radcliffe House, the Hazards and number 10 Busbridge Lane, then there is only one conclusion and that is to vote against the application. My recommendation to you this evening, Mr. Chairman, is to say no. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Martin. Uh, do I have any speakers? I'm seeing no hands at the moment. No hands appearing. Oh, Councillor Cosso. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I, I guess we ought to contribute as <laughs> members of the committee. Um, can I just ask a, a factual question, first of all, of, of officers? It did say on, I need to find the relevant page. Um, sorry, I had it marked and I just lost my mark. Um, I, I'll tell you, yes, sorry. Uh, on the top of page 38, it did say that 
the report had been prepared prior to the expiry of the deadline for the receipt of um, representations in respect of the amended plans. And if there were any, there would be a supplementary um, uh, uh, report to us. I, I hadn't seen that. It certainly hasn't come through. I don't think on my email when I last looked to the sun. So th the first thing I wanted to do was just seek um, confirmation from officers that there have been no further representations and there's no further information for us on that. I, I, I'm a bit torn about this, to be honest with you. I, I think I, I listened quite carefully and I hope sympathetically to, to, to the resident representations that, that we had. And I guess if I were in a situation in which I had um, a, a number of trees and, and, and so on and, and only part the garage and it was all going to be pretty much brick, brick wall in the future, I, I wouldn't be desperately happy about that. On, on the other hand, um, I've also read the officer's report, um, and it does seem to me that what they are effectively saying to us is, is that, yes, this is a significant change. It's not a coach house anymore. It's going to be a quite different sort of building. But what we have to judge is whether on planning grounds that there, there is sufficient um, detriment in, in, in terms of amenity and overbearing and all the things we, we have to look at. And, and I didn't get from, from our officers um, that, that level of, of information. I very much recognise and respect the view of Councillor Martin as the local councillor, uh, one of the local councillors, that, that that is his view about it. Um, but that, that doesn't seem to me to be what's come over from, from our planning officers. I, I also you know, just have to make the point, I think, that much as, you know, we might sympathise, um, none of us actually have a right to a particular view or the retention of that view. And the other point I think I have to make in terms of the submission that was made to us is it may well be the case, um, as, as, as was stated to us, that it would be possible to provide a different sort of application that, that had less impact and was less sympathetic it, it's no part of, of our role um, to be able to say, well, we'll turn this down because we think something better might come along. I know that's the legitimate aspiration for local residents, but it can't be part of our role as, as a planning committee. So again, as ever, um, I've, 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 from, on the basis of what I've heard so far, on the basis of what I, I, I've read, I think I will be supporting the officers on this, but I will welcome uh, other views from members. Thanks, uh, thanks, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Costa, you, you had a question for the officers. I, yes, I did. I just wanted to check that, you know, in, in the light of what they said in the report, that they hadn't received those further representation. It's uh, at the bottom. They, they basically said that there have been some amended plans and the deadline hadn't expired when the report was written for any further representations. If there were any further representations, they would send them to us. That's what the report says. And I was merely checking that there hadn't been any. Susie, could you comment, please? Certainly. Um, there were no additional representation letters after the amended plans had been sent. The amended plans included um, reducing the rear um, away from the root protection zone. Um, so that was that was the change, really. OK. Thank you very much. Very helpful. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, um, Councillor Goodridge. Michael, please go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I know this area well as I used to be the ward councillor many decades ago, um, and in fact previously knew the owners of both um, 12 uh, Busbridge Lane and Piper's Field going back a, a while. Um, so I know the area well, and it's always difficult when you have uh, um, Houses at right angles, when the, when the, as we do in this case between Busby's Lane and, and, and Tuesday Lane. But if one looks at the block plan, at the size of the footprint of the proposed extended property, and compare it to the other houses nearby, bearing in mind the size of the plot, um, one starts thinking, you know, th this should be acceptable. We also look, um, as Councillor Cossa says, and as our officer have said, as to the effect on Piper's Field, and, and you know, you don't buy a view when you buy a property. Um, there's no 
visual uh, impact overlooking uh, his recreational space um, and generally feeling I, I, I you know, I, I have I take note of what Councillor Martin has said uh, and also um, uh, the objectors. Um, but I, I think on balance, um, I, I am happy with the officer's recommendation and can't think of something that would stick on a planning objection, uh, having considered many planning applications after the, over the last decade or two. So I, I do feel that the officers have got it right in this instance, and and we have to deal with this application as it is, not what some future application might look like. We must deal with this one, and I feel on balance this one is acceptable. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Councillor. And last speaker, Councillor Townsend. Liz, please go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I have been uh, obviously listening to, to, to my fellow councillors and, and Councillor Martin as well. And, and whilst, you know, I very much looked at the, the two different views that he, he said to look at. Um, however, you know, I, I also reading the officer's report have noticed that, that they, the um, pitch has been pitched away from that boundary on the roof um, in order to make sure that, that the impact on Piper's Field um, is... Um, reduced or, or, or there's no impact on, on the daylight of Piper's Field. And I think Susie answered my, my question about the the trees, so the, the two birch trees that are TPOs, um, so, so they will, obviously that's the, that's why the house has moved back, the part of it to, to protect those and that's under the root protection order, so, so they, those will be retained. And, and whilst I, I recognise that, that from the drawing that, that you know, that, that it does look a little bit bulky because it's only one dimensional, the fact that the roofs are sloping away, away from the um, from Piper's Field, um, does make me um, feel uh, that the impact um, is not um, sufficient. Um, so um, I think that the, the design is a sympathetic design and, and um, I am minded to, to go with the officer's recommendation unless some um, other councillors uh, raise some other issue. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor. Councillor Dinos. Kevin, please. Thank you, Chair. It's a very quick question. Um, and if I've missed it, my apologies to Susie. What is the percentage or do we know what the percentage increase is? Just making sure, you know, for my own satisfaction, that it's all within the allowable um, band. Do you know what the percentage increase is? Thank you. Susie, please. Um, hello, Councillor Dinas. I haven't worked out the percentage increase. Um, it's not a green belt area, so we don't generally work out the percentage increase oh. for non green belt areas. Appreciate it. It was just, it was trying okay. to get my head around it, just, you know, because some of the arguments have been about the bulk and the size. But if it's not there, I'll deal mm -hmm. with the plans that we've got in front. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Susie. Uh, Members, uh, I have no more speakers, so uh, I think it's time to roll to the vote. The recommendation is that permission be granted, subject to conditions one to seven and informed. Chairman, to Marie oh. Clark's just put her hand up, planning officer. Ah, ah I, can't, I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Marie Clark, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Sorry. Um, it's just to say that um, if minded to approve, we'd recommend another condition to say that the side roof light should be a minimum height of 1.7 metres, just to ensure there's no overlooking. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, with that addition, uh, then, members, and uh, with Kim's mechanistic movement to a voting thing, uh, let's proceed to the vote. The, rec the recommendation is that permission be granted. We have 13 people voting. I think somebody must have dropped off the um, um, 
connection because I thought we were supposed to have 14 people voting. Councillor Hegan has left the meeting, so I thought it was meant to be 14 councillors voting. But there's a clear um, majority anyway. It's um, 11 for and two against. Oh, that, that, that's great. Um, so we don't need to go to a, a roll call. Oh, I thought we could have made it two in a row. Um, Georgina, thank you for that. So, so members, uh, the recommendation to approve is uh, passed. Um, bear with me. Um, we move on now to applications not subject to public speaking. Um, and the first one in this section um, is WA 2021 0096, uh, site compound at Oxford Ridge in Godalming. Our proposal um, is for temporary use of this land as indicated in uh, your uh, agenda. Um, Gemma, I understand you're taking us through this one. Yes, thank you very so much, Chair. Thank right. you, Gemma. Thank you. So the, uh, the application site is located on the central green at Oxford Ridge, which currently comprises a children's play area, just at the top here, a sports facility, there is a substation here, and just in this section here, outlined in red, is a uh, vehicle parking compound which has been granted temporary consent under a previous application. The compound is being used in um, association with development going on at the Oxford Ridge Regeneration Scheme. Uh, the application seeks permission for the continued temporary use of land for a period up to five years as a site compound to include double stacked porter cabin site office shown here, access arrangement, construction material storage shown here in yellow, welfare facilities just shown here. Well, members, excuse me, apologies. <coughs> Dreadful timing, sorry about that. Um, and contractors parking for the operations associated with the Oxford Ridge Redevelopment Programme. The site compound would be enclosed by a 1.8 metre high mesh fencing and accessible via vehicle access from the north and south east of the site. The proposal seeks to retain the existing construction compound, which provides contractors parking, and extend the compound to provide further vehicle parking the material storage and the double stack porter cabin. As mentioned, the proposed site compound would be enclosed by a 1.8 metre high anti-climbing fence. Moving on quickly to some photographs now. These photographs show the extent of the existing temporary um, contractors parking, shown here and here. This is the west of the site, which would be extended to accommodate the uh, contractors parking and for the siting of uh, the materials. Uh, here we are looking um, at the east of the site, and just to get an idea of uh, what's there at the moment. You can see the sports facility up here. And this is where the site would be extended slightly to incorporate some more vehicle parking and the welfare facilities. So uh, members are being asked today to exercise their judgment on whether the further temporary consent is appropriate on this site, uh, given con giving consideration to the uh, exceptional circumstances which have resulted in the unforeseen delay to the uh, Oxford Ridge Redevelopment Scheme and the assurances that the construction works uh, can be completed at Oxford Ridge within a further five year time frame. Members are also being asked to consider the design and impact on visual amenity in acknowledging that the proposal would appear incompatible with the surrounding residential character of the area and would alter the openness of the green, but that these impacts would be temporary in nature and on completion of the construction works within five years that the land would be returned to an agreed condition. Also under consideration is the uh, impact on residential amenity. And I would ask members just to notice the note the distance between the proposal and the residential dwellings and the recommendation for an environmental management plan and restrictions proposed on operating hours, all of which are considered to mitigate any material impacts on neighboring amenity. There is no update to this application, and as such, officer's recommendation remains as set out on page 61 of the agenda, that permission be granted, subject to the conditions set out on pages 61 to 63 of the agenda, and the informatives set out on page 64 of the agenda. Thank you, Chairman. 
Thanks very much, Gemma. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I point out to the committee that it doesn't always rain in Oxford Bridge. And in fact, yesterday it was absolutely delightful. Uh, I have one speaker, Stephen. Uh, sorry, excuse me, <laughs> Councillor Cossa. Steve, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. It's, it's, I'm generally happy with this. I just got a question because I'm a little bit confused. And page 50, um, blah, 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 I have to get it under my lamp here. Hold on. Um, page 56 um, sets out the exceptional reasons for this, most of which I, I, I can accept. Um, and it includes, as a final bullet point, the addition of sites E and F to the Oxford Ridge um, schemes. It then goes on to set out the schedule for, for the timing of all these phases. There is no indication at all of, of um, site F. And it's a bit mystifying because it seems that the last phase that due to finish is, is on site E, which would finish in 2024, yet permission is being applied for, for 2000 to, to, into 2026. Now, I absolutely understand you have to give some leeway on these things, but that does seem a pretty hefty margin. And I do wonder whether it's got something to do with the mysterious site F about which we seem to have no information in the report. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Gemma, could you help us out, please? I can, and I can absolutely see where the confusion has arose. I'm just very quickly going to check my emails because those were the actual times given to me by our um, housing department in terms of the timetable. So all I can do is apologise and um, and just see if I can clear this up. Um, but I'm not sure if it's something I could clear up straight away um, if, if members are right to... Uh, for two minutes, just while I check, and uh, and I do apologise that this uh, this has happened. Right. You're doing very well. I don't want to be difficult, Chairman, but but no? I, at the moment I think it's very difficult to agree something that appears to have such you know a, a long leeway on it, and I think temporary permissions ought to to, to be realistic, and that doesn't seem realistic at the moment. Uh, of course, Councillor. Yep. Okay, Gemma, go ahead. You're doing very well. <laughs> Thank you. Again, I do apologise, members, for the delay. Councillor Cole, I see you've got your hand up, but let, let's hold on for, for Gemma to do one thing at a time. Is that OK? Yes, of course, yes. Unfortunately, members, this is not something that's that's quite close to hand. I do apologise. It was. Uh, let me just. I'm going to double check the report just in case it. Uh, it was the file just in case it was put in there. Chairman, could I just say while while that's been checked that um, I mean there may be a way. I don't as I said, I don't want to be difficult about this, and, and I'm not unsympathetic to to the proposal. I mean there may be a way round it, which. Um, provides for the, if the committee felt this way anyway, that um, provides for you as chairman to be satisfied um, that, that the completion date on, on site F, which I'm assuming it is, um, were, were within a year or something of, of the, the estimated completion date. I, I, just, I just otherwise would feel hugely uncomfortable about giving a temporary permission for for something like this that appears to have a two-way margin, a two-year margin at, at the end. But I don't know how others feel about it, but if I, I understand, I don't want to put the officer in difficulty. They're relying on information they've got from the housing department, which isn't, for whatever reason, either hasn't arrived or hasn't been transported into the report. Okay, let, let's hold on that for a bit then, Councillor Gosser. Uh, let's proceed with some speakers if we can. Uh, Councillor Cole, Richard. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, just to support Councillor Costa. I mean, if, if I was close to this um, compound and it'd already been in place for five years and I was hearing another five years was coming along, 
to make 10 years, I would be seriously concerned by that. So perhaps, so it is good that we can we seek to minimize that um, that time as far as we can. Um, right. per perhaps the officer can, can, can give us an idea about just how many people or how many properties are close, existing properties are close to this, people who, who really are gonna to have to live with this for that, for that period. Yeah, uh, hang on, Richard. Uh, I'm the only one that uh, cannot walk and chew gum at the same time, but uh, I think I'd let Gemma be, Gem sorry, Gemma, yes? Uh, uh, my apologies, I have found the relevant email. If you'll bear with Phew. me, I will, uh, thankfully. Yes, so um, I'm just in respect to the report. trying to see where the uh, I think I did I did actually request this information uh, further and I think what happened is maybe it didn't get transcribed com correctly into the report so for that I do apologize just getting to the correct page now right so site D being completed summer uh, 2016 site E that's correct what I've written there site F would be on site March 2013 scheduled to be completed March 2024 so apologies it does look that Mar that site F was missed off that because I was waiting with further information so apologies for that so it looks like um, all sites are to be completed by May 2024 yeah. thank um, you for that. Well, in which case, I would certainly want to not agree to five years, but let's hear what others have got to say. I've had my... Are you Councillor Goodrich? Chairman, it, it seems to me the answer to this is, is to either have a condition or somewhere in it which basically puts a condition to say that the site will be cleared within, say, six months or nine months of the works being completed in sites A to F. Uh, in, in that way, um, if, if the building accelerates like mad, um, we get the, the compound. I'm quite sure the council, the applicant, would wish to remove everything as soon as they can, but we could make it clear that, that the compound is to be removed within a period after the final building works have been completed. And in that way, the compound will not be there for longer than necessary. Um, and how that's worded in a condition, um, I leave um, to our experienced officers, but um, that would seem to be the best thing. And, and the long stop is five years. So if there's delays, it goes on to 2026. But if the building works are finished by March 24, then probably by the end of the calendar year of 2024, they will clear the site. Thank you, Councillor. Gemma, uh, are you okay with that? We can add that bracketing? Yes, yes, I'd, I'd, I can see that we can, I, I, I don't see the problem with actually uh, amending condition, I believe it was condition um, three. So condition three at the moment says that the site compound is granted temporary consent for five years from the date of this decision. Oh, it does actually say or on before the expiration of this period. So. Um, we could um, we could change that to say on or before the expiration of the um, final phase of the development. If that comes forward, I, 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 we could we could we could amend that in some way that it would uh, would take into consideration that if 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 site F has been complete. Well, I, I think actually the last site to be completed would potentially be E because that one I think was um, a little bit later. But if uh, site E is completed. Um, prior to that that date, that the the restoration would start from then rather than from the five years. So there wouldn't be, you know, had all the development been for some reason uh, completed a year earlier, um, you know, we wouldn't expect to have the the site compound sitting around for another year before the five years expires. So I'm, I'm sure we can quite easily amend that to, that condition to, to 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 reflect that. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Gemma. Uh, Councillor Darcy Martin, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I noticed that the compared to the uh, original um, site, it wraps around the sports facility um, on three sides now. And I wondered what the sports facility was used, who used it and how often it was used, because it would seem to me it could be quite intrusive and intimidating even for people using this sports facility to be overlooked by, um, I, won't, I won't be, 
unpleasant about builders, but you know what builders can be like. Um, so I was wondering if it shouldn't be a condition that they should have to have some sort of um, fencing that is you can't see through, essentially, um, because otherwise there are there is potential for, let's say, not not very pleasant things happening. Chairman, um, if, if I may um, come in on that point, Councillor Darcy's point. Um, so this 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 um, area is used by the residents of the um, of the estate. It's predominantly a basketball court, but people use it for all sorts: riding bikes, um, kicking footballs around. My actually, my daughter uses it regularly, so I, I do know it well. I have to say that. Um, the council's contractors have not once bothered us or anything like this. So I, what I would be keen to um, steer away from would be something that was more onerous than than really is necessary. I mean, obviously, they have to enter into a contract with Waverley as our contractors. And so we do have control over them that way. I'm not saying we couldn't um, speak to them about maybe changing the, the the screening treatment but what I would say from personal experience is that it isn't a problem in terms of feeling intimidated or anything like that. Thank you Chairman. Thanks Beth. Uh, yeah, Councillor Darcy, I, if I follow your drift I, I would assume that there is other legislation that may be brought to bear um, but uh, thank, thank you Beth. Uh, Councillor Townsend, Liz, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I just wanted to query something. Um, uh, in one of the pictures of the um, the area at the moment, w were there some kind of um, constructions within it or some kind of sort of wooden sculptures or something within there? Yes, thank you, Gemma. <laughs> Yes, just to confirm, there are some sculptures on the site, the proposed um, compound, so the existing compound and the proposed compound, they wouldn't affect those structures at all. They're outside of the south site, they're to the east of the site. So anything, so, so really the existing sports facility, the existing substation and the existing sculptures are outside of the site area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks. Thanks, Gemma. Thanks, Councillor. Yes, let me assure you that art is alive and well in Oxford Bridge. Uh, we have uh, Councillor Ellis, please. Patricia. Thank you, Thank you Chairman. I apologise. I lost my internet connection for simply ages. I couldn't get through on the phone. So I'm presuming you've now moved on to an agenda item 10.1. And because I've missed what I think is a great part of it, I won't be able to take part in the vote. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Pat. Sorry about that. Uh, and finally, last speaker is uh, Councillor Els. David, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I won't congratulate you on taking that position because I seconded you anyway, so I'm pleased to see you there. Uh, I'm just going back to Councillor Darcy's point, um, on page 53, it shows the site layout for the, the previous uh, temporary permission, the 2016 one, and that shows the, the site in ex exactly the same um, areas as is shown on, on the current site plan on page 49 so I, I think it's always wrapped around the the sports facility there so i don't think there's any cause for concern really there just okay. just a point of information thank you thanks councillor uh, and finally councillor cole richard yes can i have an answer to the question i posed which how many properties um have been occupied continuously for this uh, up to 10 year period you know people who have been affected by this compound or will be for up to 10 years. I can see three or four on the picture on page uh, 49. Is that is that correct? Beth, you want, you want to comment on this? I, I, I certainly can. Thank you, Chairman. Um, if, if I could start, Councillor Cole, by just asking you to clarify your question. Are you asking of the existing dwellings surrounding the green? Uh, I was just trying to understand the impact on people who have been on that site or lived on that near that site for what well, we'll have for a period of up to 10 years, whether they, um, anyway, on, on page 49, there's 
number 19, I guess, Oxford Ridge. Has that been there the whole time? I mean, as, as someone being number 19 with this compound across them already five years and potentially another five years? That's okay, the question I'm trying to ask. Okay, so number 19. I mean, I can't tell you if it's been... I mean, I absolutely understand why you're asking the question. I can't tell you if it's been number 19 or those, those runs, run of dwellings have been occupied, but they've certainly been there for 10 plus years. They're the, part of the old estate. In fact, the whole of the that green is bounded by residential development, either new in, in its new form or old form. And, that, and, the, and the residential development on the older part of the ridge has been there, I would chance my arm at about 50, 60 years, if not longer. But there are about, I would say, immediately overlooking that particular parcel of land. I don't think I'd be too far wrong by, by saying between 40 and 50 houses. Okay, thank you. So, so it's, it's in the, the old part of the build, it's not, it's not in the new part. That, thank you, that, that's very clear. Thanks. Thanks, Beth. Well, thank you, uh, Councillor Cole. Uh, Councillor Darcy, uh, you want to come back? I just did want to come back because I think um, Councillor Else is mistaken because as I understand it on page 54, it says that the compound currently on site is that approved under WA 2017-0795. And if you look at that, that doesn't wrap around. So that was what I understood from having read the papers, but I could be wrong, but that's what it says on page 54. So... As I understand it, currently it doesn't wrap around, but it will wrap around if we approve. I, I stand corrected, Chairman. Okay. Thank okay. You. Uh, so, Councillor Darcy, what are, what are you saying about that? Can you just make it plain <laughs> simple for a poor chair here? I, I, and, I don't and... want to disparage the building fraternity. I just thought it was worth mentioning the fact that some people might find it a bit intimidating if they're going to do sports and they're surrounded on nearly three sides um, by this site where there'll be people presumably gotcha. having rest breaks and so on and so forth. Yeah, gotcha. okay. Um, yeah. However, if that's not a problem, then I'm, you know, that's fine. I just thought it was worth raising. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Uh, now, Councillor Cole, do you still have your hand up? Is it? Joe Stan for not for not taking it then. Uh, okay. Uh, Kim, we should move to a vote then, please, members, just to remind you. The recommendation is the permission be granted uh, subject to conditions one to six and informatives one to two. Yeah. But there's been an addition, I think, hasn't there? Chairman, can I just ask before we vote? I thought we were going to look at how we could actually ensure that we gave primacy to it, it the, the, the permission being given only for as long as the development was still taking place or until it had been completed with a maximum of five years. And I'm not sure we quite bottomed that, that issue. Um, and I just wonder if we could have some advice from the planning officer on that before we actually vote as to how that, that could be amended, or we may be advised that they think it's satisfactory already. But I don't think we finished that debate, did we? Yeah, I, I think Gemma did suggest uh, a change to uh, one of the uh, conditions. Gemma? Can, can we be clear what it is? <laughs> Yes, um, actually, there's, there's just a couple of points I'd like to bring up before members go to the vote, if that's OK. Just a couple of points of clarification. In respect to the two site layout plans that were previously approved um, on this site, originally when the site came forward, it was looking to do a wraparound compound. And planning permission for five years was, was granted um, for that development. Subsequently, a section 73 came in, which um, resulted in the current um, site layout at the moment that's on site so what uh, this current application is is it's looking to almost recreate the previous planning application that was granted on site albeit that is not what's on site now so, so that's the first point of clarification um, the second point of clarification is it, it is appreciated that this site is located in a very residential context and that there are houses surrounding the whole of the green um, the reason for having a site compound is because there's obviously at the moment a lot of development that is or will be continuing on the Oxford Ridge site and the sites are very quite small um, and that 
you know, potentially there could be difficulty in trying to accommodate both the build and the constructors vehicles and the materials storage on the sites themselves. So this is why the compound is considered to be, um, you know, the, 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 the solution to rather than having parking ad hoc over the place to actually be located in one section. Um, absolutely appreciate it then it's uh, a certain uh, number of residents who are more affected than others um, but I mean the only sort of comfort we could give is that we are we are pretty certain well we, we're assured that the build is only going to be for another five years and notwithstanding that if it's not five years if it does go to extend further then the applicants will have to put in another either another temporary consent um, you know um, why which is what I would imagine they would do so so this this would be able to be to be debated again should that 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 arise um so there's some comfort there that you know even if it does look like the five years is is not going to be met that that still means that the, the consent will expire and the um, a further consent will need to be sought and finally yes I believe we can um, amend uh, condition five which I believe I think it was five apologies if not but there is a condition on there which does suggest that uh, after the expiration of five years three thank you thank you councillor Goodrich which would uh, suggest that after the expiration of five years that the site be um, restored to a condition which is to be agreed by the local planning authority um, we could amend that condition I'm I, I haven't looked at some wording now but I think it's quite simple to be able to amend that condition to to say that should uh, construction be completed before the five years that the site is restored then and then what we would do is we'd look at a trigger point for that um, it could be the final uh, you know the final dwelling on site uh, e, I believe, is going to be the last one that would be the trigger for that. So if, of course, the development is completed earlier than within the five years, we could then look to start site restoration rather than waiting for five years. I hope that clarifies the situation. Thank you. Thank you, Gemma. On, on that last point, members, uh, taking, taking that amendment, um, if you're happy to do it uh, by unmuting your microphones and agreeing to it, I hope we can move fairly quickly, but I see Councillor Goodridge's hand is up. May I put it to you first? Just briefly, I think we need to have the principle, whether it's six months after the last, I mean, you can't expect them to clear it within, you know, a couple of hours of the last bit of development. So I, I suggested six months. I don't know whether that's realistic or whether it should be shorter or longer, but I, I felt six months from the building contract being completed. Thanks, Councillor. Uh, Beth, can you comment on that, please? I, I, I can certainly try. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I would suggest something like within six months of the, um, the completion of the final dwelling of the regeneration scheme or at the expiry of five years, whichever is the earlier, um, the ground shall be returned to its previous condition to the satisfaction of the local planning authority or something like that. Thank you, thanks. Chairman. Thanks, Beth. That, that's pretty good. Members, are we happy to accept that uh, addition, that amendment? Agreed. 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 So based, based on that, if we can proceed to the, uh, to the vote, that would be good. Uh, the recommendation is that permission be granted subject to all of those things we've been talking about. Please vote. We have 14 for and one abstention. Excellent. Thanks, Georgina. So uh, uh, that recommendation is, uh, is carried. Uh, Beth has her hand up, Chairman. Oh, sorry, Beth, go ahead. It was actually just a, a hangover hand, unfortunately, but I, I will use it to, to um, say good evening, members, because I'm going to bow out now. Okay, thanks very much for your help, Beth, and I understand about hangovers. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Good night, members. Okay, um, Georgina, uh, it's it's close to one and a quarter hours since our last comfort break. Might it be appropriate, in your view, for us to take five minutes? That's fine. We can put up the screen um, break slide again. Now, would you do that? And, and members, see you in five minutes.
Hi, Georgina. How are we going? Yeah, we've had our five minutes. Good. Uh, and you know, are we back on YouTube? Or we always we were are. on YouTube? Right. Yeah, we're back. few people have turned their videos up so I think there might be one or two people not back yet. Right so members if you will if you're back please turn your videos on. There's also a message from Beth saying that she got ahead of herself and she's here for another item. Yeah, I did wonder. <laughs> Okay, I think all, uh, just looking down the list here. Uh, Georgina, would you agree, agree all videos of, of members are on? I, I think, think we've got all members back now. All right, members, I'll, I'll, I'll bring you to uh, agenda item 10.2. Um, this is WA 2021-0175. Uh, this is uh, uh, an application under Regulation 3 for the erection of two dwellings with associated works to provide parking and amenity space following demolition of garages uh, in Badgers Close, Farncombe. Gemma, over to you. Thank you very much. Again, thank you ever so much, Chairman. Right, so the... Okay. Site comprises tarmac parking and garages and lies to the south of the main highway adjacent to the junction of Cherry Tree Lane. It is bounded by residential bungalows to the northeast with the garages and a substation to the southwest. To the southeast lies a grass verge containing trees and uh, which border onto the rear gardens of a res residential street to the far south. That's just here. The proposal is for the demolition of five garages and five unallocated parking vehicle spaces and the erection of two residential modul modular units with associated vehicle parking and landscape. So just to advise, the modular units are located here and here. This will be the amenity area for the proposed modular units and these will be the parking spaces. There'll be some planting to the front here. The proposed residential units would be single storey in height and would feature flat roofs. They would be uh, utilise a combination of rendering with natural looking timber cladding. The internal living accommodation would meet the technical housing standards and all internal primary accommodation would be served by unrestricted windows. That would therefore allow for light and air to circulate the rooms. The proposed development would provide appropriate external private amenity space for the future residents. Moving to some photographs now. This is a photo of the site from Badgers Road and this shows the entrance to the parking area which is here and these are the garages to be demolished. Moving to the next slide, this is a photo for within the site looking out to the junction of Cherry Tree Road and Badgers Close. This slide will show the uh, existing single storey development on Badgers Road. And this slide is showing the two storey development on Badgers Road. So these slides are just um, to give you an idea of the sort of diversity of the built form in the, in the surrounding street scene. Moving on to the key matters for consideration, uh, members being asked to once again exercise their judgment on the distribution of the vehicle parking um, by acknowledging that the proposal will result in the loss of five garages and five vehicle parking spaces, but have regard to the parking survey report that accompanies this application, which concludes that whilst the proposal will displace parking from the site, this could be accommodated through existed on street parking opportunities without resulting in unacceptable levels of parking stress. The County Highway Authority have assessed and reviewed this application and they raise no objection to the proposal on highway safety or operational grounds. Uh, 
Members are also being asked to have consideration to the impact on the trees. Again, acknowledging that the proposal has the potential to cause harm to existing trees as a result of a required crown lift, but in that the planning balance, the potential harm to the trees have a localized, uh, sorry, the trees themselves have a localized visual contribution and the potential harm is outweighed by the benefits of the proposed development, which are the contribution towards the government aims and the council's own housing stock. Uh, members are also asked to consider the design and impact on visual amenity. Um, it's acknowledged again that whilst the proposed new residential units would not respond to the overall pattern of the development or character of the appearance of the surrounding area, by their very nature, the units would be unlikely to respond to any residential context. But given the diverse nature of the built environment in Badgers Close, the addition of further diverse built form into the street scene would not significantly detract from the visual appearance of the immediate or wider surrounding area. Consideration on residential amenity um, noting the single storey nature of the residential units and the distances between be retained between the existing neighbouring properties and the impact on archaeology, noting that the County Council archaeologist who raises no objection to the proposal subject to a condition. Um, there's no update to this application. Officers would just like to make a, a very small point of clarification within the agenda that on page 77 in the final paragraph under the heading conclusion, the trees are considered to have a limited localised visual contribution and not a limited vocalised visual contribution. I just thought I'd make that clear. Officers, a recommendation remains as set out on page 77 of the agenda that permission be granted subject to the conditions set out on page 77 to page 80 and the informative set out on page 80 to 81 of the agenda. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks, Gemma. Uh, I like the idea of singing trees. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, members, I'm not seeing any hands uh, up on this one. Ah, Councillor Cossa, and then Councillor Wilson. Councillor Cossa, please. Hey, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I was trying to hold back, so I didn't always end up going first. <laughs> um, first of all, a very simple question. On page 68, under the consultation and town council comments, it says against Godalming Town Council to be reported in update. I seem to recall it was perhaps discussed at the Town Council, but I don't see, I, don't, I haven't seen any update and I'd just like to be uh, informed what the position is about uh, whether we've received anything from the Town Council and what their view was. Um, overall, I'm very sympathetic to the purpose of these things, but I, I would like to just make a, a couple of observations. Um, it, it's quite extraordinary, of course, to read something in a, a planning report a, 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 along the lines of, um, uh, wait, I don't know if I can find it, yeah, um, that um, the, 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 this would not um, this would not actually um, sort of fit in anywhere, <laughs> and, and it is bound to have um, detract from the visual appearance of the immediate or wider surrounding area. And I, it, it's pretty difficult to think of an application in which, if it said that, would would be would be attractive. And, and I would just like to make a sort of general comment around that. Actually, I, I did note that there were only two objections received, but I could actually imagine that if, if this were a proposal in, in other parts of, of the community in, in, in Godalming, it, it, it would probably create a riot actually. And, and I, I do, against that consideration, have some concern about the position with regard to the trees. Yes, I, I note that they don't have preservation orders, that category, but the, these are a couple of mature oaks and a sycamore as I understand it. And I think it's a great shame um, that, that we actually have to to remove them Be, because of the purpose for which we want and need this accommodation and because there hasn't been um, a lot of local um, concern expressed about it I, I, I won't vote against the proposal but I, I do have some some concerns about it but I would like to know what the position is in relation to Godwin Town Council please thank you. Uh, thank, thank you uh, Councillor Gossip. Um, Gemma? You're quite right, Councillor. I do apologise. There, there should have been an update to this, and uh, I, I take responsibility for failing to do that. But um, just to advise that the Godalming Town Council have responded that they, they positively, positively support a variety of solutions to aid, aid the homelessness situation. So they have positively supported the application. Um, with respect to the impact on the character of the area, I think officers have to acknowledge that, that sometimes you will have a, a particular type of development um, that would need an on balance 
decision, um, which is what we've done here. I think we've had to be quite upfront with the fact that it's it's clear that it's it's not your typical style of dwelling. It's not being proposed to be that. It's proposed to be short term temporary accommodation um, to you know to, to to help out with the government's aims in terms of providing um, temporary accommodation for homelessness while they transition. Um, so for the reason, because of its form, its scale, there aren't, it really isn't just going to fix into any residential context. So the best context for us is quite a diverse context, you know, removing some existing flat roof garages, um, replacing them with some flat roof buildings. You know, there's a lot of uniform buildings in Godalming. Um, you know, there's a lot of uniformity down, down Cherry Tree sort of way. And, you know, they're all sort of two story terror. Uh, you know, two-story two terrace buildings. This was considered to be in, in that sort of diverse, more diverse, that this would probably sit more comfortably in rather than sitting within a context where, you know, development is all very uniform and therefore this would be far more um, alien feature. Um, with respect to the tree, there is, there is regret that, you know, potentially the proposal could have an impact. The trees themselves are not being proposed to be removed. They are proposing to have their crowns trimmed um it, it potentially could be that the trimming of those crowns um mm. wouldn't harm the tree but officers have taken the view that you know we need to be again up front and look at the balance of of you know the potential harm to the tree because we can't say that you know the crowning wouldn't completely you know wouldn't benefit the tree it, it is it is potentially going to be a uh, you know have an impact on it negatively but we've considered that in the balance as well but the trees could potentially you know uh, still th still thrive we, they would just need to have their crown reduced um, you know uh, every so often thank you thanks Gemma uh, Councillor Wilson George please thank you chair um, I am in favour of this for social reasons and I am frightened at the amount of people who may soon be looking for housing. There are going to be a lot of people losing their jobs, a lot of people not able to pay their rent. And we have actually got a homeless problem. The community in Binscombe, I've lived here for 40 odd years, um, are very supportive. We have a lot of vulnerable people. We have a lot of elderly people, but we have, I think, a good community feeling as well. I personally will be making sure that the housing authority are actually looking after these people because a lot of them are going to be vulnerable. We have to do this. I wish we had more of them, not necessarily in one place because I think that would be wrong. But if the funding is there, I would say push for it. We need it. People need homes. That doesn't make it easier to park your car but come on now you'd rather have a house for somebody than your place for your car to park there is actually a lot of pressure on car parking around here but there are spaces around about within reasonable walking distance um, I might not be popular with some of my neighbours for proposing to accept this but I, I do feel that we have a duty to deal with the homelessness. We have a duty to deal with people who are probably going to be evicted. There's going to be a lot of those. So I would say, please vote for this. We'll look after them in Binscombe and we'll make sure that the housing department does too. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. And as one of the two ward councillors for Binscombe, I wholeheartedly agree with your sentiments, George. Um, Councillor Townsend. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I too agree with Councillor Wilson's um, sentiments as well. And um, I think this is a, a really good, um, you know, quick solution um, to provide um, uh, temporary accommodation for, for people that find themselves through no fault of their own homeless. And um, um, I, I just would say just one thing. We do have obviously um, on one side of the, the site, there's number 13, which is quite a small bungalow. And I just wondered whether or not it might be possible to incorporate any boundary treatment um, uh, because this looks slightly higher than the bungalow uh, and uh, obviously looking out of the garden and looking at the side of it, it could be, it is obviously a very square 
um, construction. I just wondered wh whether or not it would be possible to offer number 13 some boundary treatment um, at all to, to just act as, as screening um, to, the, um, to the actual construction. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor. Gemma, would you be able to comment on that, please? Sorry, I couldn't find, uh, couldn't find the unmute button there. Um, at the moment, I believe there is a, a closed board fence up there. Um, I, I, obviously, we appreciate that the, the proposed extension does extend significantly along the boundary, um, although it is single storey. Um, I think any further boundary treatment would, it, it would just be potentially more oppressive if you go up to the same sort of height right on the boundary as the height of the building um, at least there's sort of a a good there's a distance between the um at the boundary and the side elevation which will maybe give a, a better sort of presence than actually having very high boundary treatment which might be more oppressive so potentially whilst on paper it, it, it looks like there would be a sort of maybe overbearing impact there's still there still is quite a good gap there and i'm just i'm, I'm just wondering what the benefit of of maybe putting up higher boundary treatment right on that boundary whether or that's going to be a more overbearing impact than the situation that will uh, you know if permission is granted that will, will happen on site now Thanks, Gemma. Uh, Councillor Townsend, does that ring true with you? Yes, that's fine. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Gemma's obviously aware of the the um, um, how far, far up the uh, actual construction goes, so I'll, I'll have to defer to her expertise on this point. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Pleasure, Councillor. I, I think we're all very lucky to have such excellent officers. Um, and Councillor Goodridge, Michael. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, very briefly, I I'm in favour of this. Um, OK, the design is not brilliant, but as I understand it, we were successful, the housing department was successful in getting a grant to get these bu particular buildings. Um, and therefore, it it it's very important that we take up the offer and, and have a planning permission so that these buildings, which will clearly be uh, unfortunately needed, are available in our community. So uh, I will be voting in favour of this. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor. Councillor Darcy, Martin, please. Um, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, actually, Councillor Goodridge has just um, provided some useful information for me there, um, which knocks out one of the things I was going to say. But the other thing I was going to ask was um, about the energy efficiency of the buildings and the expected lifespan of the buildings. Because I appreciate the, there's a need for accommodation that can be put up quickly for homeless people to, to use and that, that's transitional probably, they'll be moving somewhere else eventually. But are the buildings themselves temporary and is there an intention that this site will be uh, reused at some point or is, and if so, how long is it expected the buildings will be there? And also about the energy efficiency, as I say, um, are these buildings going to be up to standard in terms of insulation and so on and so forth? Thank you. Uh, thanks, Councillor. Gemma, could you uh, comment on some of those planning matters, please? Yes, I could. I mean, in terms of the um, energy efficiency of the buildings, I do understand that they have um, agreed to obtain a passive house certificate um, for the units if the consent is granted. So that would uh, that would suggest that they are, that they're very energy efficient um, and, and they have been designed to, particularly for that reason. In terms of temporary, I think it's more, the word temporary, I think is more is used in terms of temporary for um, accommodation for people to move in and out of. I think what members have to understand is that, that this is actually for a permanent p permission. Uh, there is no temporary consent on the site. I think it was more the units that are, uh, or the use of the units, which is going to be temporary rather than the actual siting of them. So if you were to grant planning permission today, it would be a permanent position for those buildings. Thank you. Thanks, Gemma. Um, uh, I have no more speakers, so uh, I suggest we move uh, to the vote. The recommendation is that permission be granted subject to uh, conditions 1 to 10 and informatives 1 to 7. Uh, Kim, may we uh, have, have the voting machine loaded up before us, please? 
Perfect. Members, if you'd like to vote. Thank you. We've had 14 for and one against. Well, that's excellent. Then I, that's, uh, that recommendation is uh, carried. The permission is granted. Thank you, uh, everybody, for that. And Beth, thank you if you are about to leave for your uh, for the next one. Um, yes, thank you, Chairman. I'll leave again. Good thank night. You. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. Um, 10.3, uh, our last one this evening, councillors, WA 2020-1110, Rose Cottage, Parkman Road in Bramley, correction of extension. Uh, yeah, let's give it a correction of an extension. Um, and Joe, Joe, Joe Dawes, you're, uh, you, you have the short straw. Over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Um, Kimberly, can you please share the slides for me? Yeah, just pulling them up now. Sorry. Next slide, please. If you can move on to the next one. Great. Okay, this is an end of terrace property located on the western side of Barton Road. The area is characterised by relatively close built residential development. The next slide, please. The application proposes a single storey extension on the rear elevation, as indicated by this slide. Next slide, please. This slide shows the existing elevations with a small porch on the rear and a two storey projection at the rear. Next slide, please. This is the existing floor plan, which shows the porch, which would be removed um, as part of this application. Next slide, please. The proposal is to extend four meters in depth from the main rear elevation to create a new open plan kitchen. The proposal would be set 0.25 meters off of the boundary adjacent to the rear wall, tapering to 0.06 meters at its deepest point. As you can see, the proposal would have a flat roof with a height of three meters. The next slide, please. This shows the proposed ground floor plan with a new open plan kitchen with a window and door looking down the garden. This slide also indicates the current position of the fence. It is understood that there's a boundary dispute regarding the position of the existing fence, which the applicants indicate has been erected on their land. Members are reminded, however, that land ownership is a civil matter and not a planning issue. Officers have, however, been provided with land registry details and are satisfied that the legal situation regarding the certificate submitted with the application is correct. Next slide, please. Given the close-knit nature of existing properties, it's accepted that the proposed extension would be close to the neighbouring property and windows serving their kitchen. The Council's Residential Extension Guidelines, SPD, recognises that when assessing the impact of an extension on neighbours' access to daylight, individual site circumstances must be taken into account. And whilst the 45 degree test is a consideration, this is a matter of judgment. This slide provides members with an indication as to the impact of the proposal on the neighbours' windows, with 45 degree lines taken from the neighbours' kitchen windows. The neighbour has two windows on the rear elevation, although one is very small, and therefore the principal window serving the kitchen is the one furthest from the proposal. A back door and an obscurely glazed bathroom window in the, in the neighbour's single storey projection 
also face towards the boundary. Whilst the proposals would clearly breach a 45 degree line, members are reminded that the proposed extension lies to the north of the neighbour and any boundary fencing would be in a similar position and could extend to a height of two metres. The neighbour has themselves got a single storey projection which cuts light to these windows. It's recognised, however, that this is not an uncommon form of development and where properties are closely positioned together. Next slide, please. These photos show the rear elevation and the existing fence, although as indicated, this is not the line of the boundary, which is more in line with the edge of the existing porch. Um, sorry, I think the, the slides somehow have got shortened, but the, it's the, the furthest, you'll see the furthest arrow um, points to the side of the porch. That is the line of the boundary. The fence has obviously been erected halfway across um, the, the applicant's porch. You can just about see the headers of the neighbor's windows on the op opposite side over the, over the fence. Next slide, please. This application is clearly a matter of judgment. And whilst acknowledging the breach of the 45 degree line, given that the site lies to the north of the neighbour and having regard to what could be erected in terms of a fence and the wider character of the area, officers consider that it would be difficult to substantiate a reason for refusal in this instance. As such, the application is recommended for approval subject to conditions in relation to plan numbers, use of matching brickwork and a condition to prevent the use of the flat roof as a form of balcony as set out on pages 91 and 92 of the agenda. Thank you, Chairman. Hey, great. Thank you very much indeed. So, members, do I have any speakers on this? I see no hands at the moment. Councillor Els, David. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I mean, on the face of it, this is a fairly inoffensive um, rear extension. Uh, the the uh, Applicant has taken care to maintain a two-storey section as far away from the neighbour as possible. But I do have grave concerns about um, the lack of or the loss of daylight to the neighbour. Um, in, in fact, I think it's probably me who requested that a plan be supplied to show these 45 degree daylight lines. And um, it should be noted that our residential extension SPD talks about daylight and not sunlight so the fact that it's uh, to the north is fairly irrelevant and, and just to read from that SPD um, under 7.3 daylight it does say in order to ensure that the amenity of the neighbouring properties is protected a variety of tests are applied. Um, it goes on if your proposal fails a test it is unlikely that the planning officer would recommend your scheme for approval. Now, this obviously does fail the test um, in our reports, and we've just seen it in the presentation, but our reports on page 90 show the plan. Um, they also show the, the kitchen window on the rear elevation. Um, 7.4 goes on to talk in more in depth about the 70, uh, what they call the 45 degree rule. And it says the purpose of the 45 degree rule is to make sure that the development does not take away too much daylight from the neighbouring property, um, which this obviously does. And I, I know that the officer has talked about the fact that there could be a new two metre fence erected in the position, but this is three metres high. This is a metre higher. And it's not a fence with daylight above it. It's going to be a three metre high brick wall. And I'm, I'm very concerned about the impact that it's going to have on the neighbouring property. But uh, I shall wait to see if any other members have comments to make. Thanks, Councillor. Uh, uh, Councillor Gale, Maxine, please. Yes, I just have a query because where we were looking at the 45 degree angles, we were looking at two windows um, in the main part of the neighbouring property. Whereas I think on the little extension that goes out, there's a door and a window also, but do you not take light um, from that aspect as well? I just wondered why it was only from the ones actually on the main house and not on the extension. Joe, Joe could you comment on that please? Certainly. Um, yeah, the, the windows on the um, facing the fence, one is an obscurely glazed bathroom uh, window 
um, clearly not a habitable room. So the impact on daylight to non-habitable rooms is, is a in a different test really um and the other there is a door it's a back door it's just a little porch um again not a habitable um part of the property so um we wouldn't take the same um impact on on that window on that that window and that door thank you thank, thanks joe uh no more speakers uh on this than members so uh, let me uh, move to the vote. Uh, the recommendation is that permission be granted subject to conditions one to three and informatives one to two. Kim, may we have the voting machine, please? Thank you. Members are encouraging you to vote. Okay, we've had everyone vote and it's 12 for and three against. Okay, uh, thanks Georgina. So that, uh, that motion is carried, the permission is granted subject to conditions one to three and informatives one to two. It does strike me now that this may well be the end of, of my first chairship. Uh, members, you've been extremely kind to me and officers been terrific. So, but just to, just to check, Georgina, I presume we have nothing to exclude press and public about and have sought no legal advice. So we really are at the end yes. of, uh, of a planning meeting. Excellent. Well, members, you, you've been great, if I may say so. Thank you all very much. Uh, wish you 